In this video, we are going to learn about network address translation. In the last video, we discussed how Internet Protocol version 4 is still widely used, but we are running out of IP addresses. So the solution has been to use network address translation. In the last video, when we had the Internet Protocol version 4 example, we had a few different IPs, and one of them said it was a local IP, and there was one called an external IP. On your home router, if you have multiple devices connected, each one will have a unique local IP address. They will all use the same external IP address that the router uses. See this example of what we might see for our device, their local IP, and their external IP. Let's say we have four devices, a computer, an iPhone, an Xbox, and a printer all connected to our router. You will see each of these will have a unique local IP assigned to them. However, they all share the same external IP. When one of these devices tries to send data or establish a connection to an outside source, an unused port will be mapped to that device until they are done with that connection. When the port is mapped to the device, all incoming messages will be routed to that specific device. When a device establishes an outgoing connection, it will find an unused port and that will be used so the network address translation seems simple in this scenario. However, if we want one of our devices to act as a server that uses port 4790 to accept connections, how would the router know to map the incoming connections to this device? Let's say that we want to use our computer as a server, and we want it to accept all incoming connections on port 4790. If you log into your router's settings, what you will have to do is look up your specific router model ID and figure out how to get into your router settings. Every single router is different. Once you get into your router, you might find an advanced section or some kind of section that allows something called port forwarding. And the way that this works is when you forward a port, you will put in the local IP address for the client that you want the incoming connections to go to. So in this example, let's say I want to use the current computer I'm on and I want to host a server and accept connections on port 4790. What I would have to do is figure out what is the local IP of this computer. So I could open up the command prompt and type in IP config and press enter. And I'm blocking out some of this stuff, but you will see that my Internet Protocol version 4 address is 192.168.0.2. So what I would do next is I would hit Create IPv4 to do a port forwarding for this. And I would put in my local IP. I would put in the start port, in port, and then... If I wanted to do this for just TCP, I would select TCP. For UDP, I would select UDP, or for both, I would select both. I'm just doing TCP, and I would just put tutorial test. And then I would hit enabled, and I would hit apply. Now what I've done is I've successfully forwarded this port, so any incoming connections on port 4790 that they should be getting redirected to this specific device that I'm currently on. Keep in mind, there are a lot of ports that are reserved. As you can see on the right, HTTP is port 80, file transfer protocol uses 21, and etc. That concludes this video, and in the next video, we are going to take a look at Indianness and why serialization is important in networking.